Hello and welcome back to our Batanian series and we're going to be starting off with a battle hopefully here because I am actually pretty slow. I'm at 2.9 while I'm in the trees and the enemy is moving at 4.6. Let's see what I actually go to. Mm, 4.2 when we're out of the trees. Come on. Yeah, there we go. He actually came to our aid and, uh, and ambushed the guy, which is really great because now I'm actually going to just speak to him real quick. Yep, he's not the leader. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's try and take him out and see what we can do. He has 79. I have taken a look at his army composition. It is a smattering of things. Nothing really amazing, but nothing really uh, too powerful. Uh, well, too weak either, <laughs> should I say. Anyway, we're going to get our people into a nice position here. I've been recruiting a bunch of units. I've been uh, doing a couple of bandit hideout uh, missions as well because one of our villages, you know, the village that uh, provides us with noble units, one of those was actually requiring a little bit of assistance. And as a result, I thought to myself, yes, let me go and do that so that we can increase our relation just that much more and gain uh, just, well, it's basically a straight up power spike when that happens because if you can get a good amount of relation with um, I'm gonna say maybe five I'm gonna say five villages that provide you with noble units if you can get those guys up to 40 relation each which is gonna take a while because it is RNG based as well it's very random in in the way that they um, assign tasks to these villages. So, of course, it's going to be a bit, shall we say, a bit difficult to ensure that you can get that relation in the first place because, of course, if it's random, you can't really determine that yourself. But otherwise, being able to get those to 30, 40 relation each and then just circling around the various faction area, you're going to have a pretty decent time there. Uh, no, never mind, never mind. All right, seems like I'm going to have to use my throne weapons. Ah, no, I can't believe I missed. Are you serious? There we go. There we go. Yes. Nope, that was a miss. There we go. Nice. In the back, like the honorable people we are. Oh, yes. Extremely honorable indeed. All right, I've got my two-handed. Let's go to town. Okay, let's not go to town. Apparently. Oh, got shot in the head. I got shot in the head. Did you see that? 121 damage. Nothing would have saved me right there. Nothing would have saved me. If I had just been up against those two crossbowmen, I would have had a pretty easy time of things, actually. But unfortunately, there was another one off to the side that decided to attack us. I didn't want to charge in this position either with my infantry because I wanted to make sure that we had our archers and our forest band, uh, bandits and things like that actually get as much experience as possible because being able to level those guys up that much quicker is very important. Gonna let this guy go once again, basically letting everyone go that I can because that is going to provide us with the much needed relation going forward. And I'm going to only be taking mercenary units and Batanian units Seems like they don't have any. <laughs> Seems like they don't have any. Uh, I could sell them, but I don't have that much space, as you can see. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'll just take the highest tier of unit. I don't think I can sort it, sort it by high tier, can I? Doesn't seem like it. So I'm going to just take these and that. Oh, I can actually take quite a lot more. Guess I'll take the tier three units as well then. Can I take all of them? No, no, I can't take all of them, but yeah, I guess I'll just take that. There we go. All right, that's perfect. Okay, we'll take all of this as well. All the loot is always going to be very nice. And let's go over to Maranath now and see if we can make some money. I mean, obviously, we have a, a pretty significant amount of money already, but, um, you know, it's always nice to have that uh, opportunity. Oh, just look at how much experience we gained from that. Insane amounts of experience. Really, really nice. Okay, so otherwise, let's sell all of this. We're going to just go from the bottom upwards. And there we go. 
There we go. Yes, yes, there we go. All right, so that's all I basically wanted to do. Every single other person apart from the Forest Bandit boss is eligible to be recruited by us, which I very much appreciate. So there's 1.8. We also gain a little bit of roguery skill there. So I guess that's not too bad. I have also been attempting, as you can no doubt tell, due to my influence being a little bit depleted, I have been attempting to try and, um, shall we say, uh, vote on some fiefs. And uh, that's the reason why my charm skill, by the way, is now at 210, because I voted for Caladog to get a fief, and I spent 100 influence to be able to do that, and I gained 21 charm skill points um, through that action. And the main reason why I wanted to do that is just purely for the fact that in the future, we may very well be marrying into Caladog's family, and as a result, having that additional relation is going to be quite important. All right, so natural leader or moral leader? Okay, uh, loyalty bonus or security bonus? I really don't care either way. Uh, uh, <laughs> loyalty, I guess, because security is already pretty high. Use any thrown weapon while entering settlements as a civilian. Personally, I think that's kind of useless, but that's me. You know, I, I just decide that that's the case. I mean, it's just my opinion after all. And uh, otherwise, I'm going to be increasing my scouting skill even further here. Should I go for any more control? Let's go for a little bit more control here. And we'll see how that goes. All right, so that seems pretty nice. There is actually a tournament going on here, but I don't think that really does much for us anymore. And I'm going to go and sell one of these. I'm going to sell this for 58,000. Anytime there's a marketplace with a significant amount of money, you probably want to do that. If you're playing a similar build to me where you're a smithy kind of character, then it's probably a good idea to go for that. All right, so um, yeah, we actually need to level up units, don't we? Yeah, we need to level up some units. So let's do that. Wow, so many, so many, absolutely crazy. And uh, we're getting, look at that, we're getting some more champions. That's nice to see. Yes, very good, very good. Let's level those guys up. And, oh yes, we also recruited Inric. And I don't know whether you remember Inric, but uh, he was someone that I basically recruited just for the, the pure reason of uh, having him run um, a caravan for us. And as you can see, he's not very well geared. So I might very well have to give him, uh, you know, some auto-equip stuff. So let's actually just take a quick look at him right now. As you can see, he has nothing at all. And there you go. Now he has stuff, which is quite nice. Uh, I don't think he's actually a, um, a horse riding guy, is he? Wait a minute. No, he is a horse riding guy because he, uh, he can ride a Batanian thoroughbred. Wow, that's actually kind of impressive. I don't have any shields for him, unfortunately. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him I'm going to give him one of these for hilarious sake sword of pointlessness. There you go. Uh, there, uh no no sword of stat doom Appar apparently he's going to use that instead. So yeah. Seems pretty good. And um I was actually hoping that I might be able to take this castle. Uh but I <laughs> I don't know. That's the thing. I, I, I could probably do it. I mean, there's only 57 in here. Um, but bear in mind that my uh, HP, as you can see, is extremely low. All right, so wait. Panalia is actually here. So I'm going to see if I can maybe take her on. Okay. Uh, we might catch up. We might. How fast is she going? 4.8. There's no way. Turiodos' army is uh, coming over here as well. They could probably take me on and maybe even achieve some kind of victory here. Um, but I'm happy to fight either or one of them. <laughs> uh, not both, please. Oh, it seems like this guy was trying to raid a village. Oh, that that's not going to work, sir. That is not going to work. Hello. I'm going to uh, see what you're all about. He is the leader of his clan. So I'm thinking that what we will do is try to persuade him. Oh... That's not, eh, this guy's really hard to, uh, really hard to persuade. I can only hope that we're going to get a critical success on one of these later, um, later options. Hopefully the next one. Nope. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, yeah, that's, 
That's it. 59% chance. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough to make that. It's gonna be tough to make that. But I'm I'm perfectly happy to fight him. It just would have been really cool if we could have potentially persuaded him to join us, because that's going to result in a uh, reasonably large power spike for the Batanians, and it's going to also uh, be a, a rather significant hit for the Southern Empire, which is exactly what we want to do, of course. We want to win against them. And uh, we are the ones, of course, in the previous episode that caused the war against the Southern Empire. So if this uh, <laughs> if this ends up being the, uh, well, shall we say the proverbial nail in the coffin or final nail in the coffin for the uh, Batanians, then it will be our fault that we <laughs> that we caused the war and then they ended, uh, ended up getting eliminated. Hopefully that's not going to be the case. Gonna get out my shield here, and we're gonna, oh, this is bad. This is a really, really bad area. Um, they are outnumbered pretty significantly, so I, theoretically I should be fine here. But Batanians, yeah, you know, you know how they are. Batanian units are not exactly known for being extremely hardy, and they can be killed very quickly and easily. And especially considering the militia are actually charging in here, this is going to be a bit of a bloodbath, I think. Okay, so maybe I can do some damage. Nice. Oh, I actually dealt some damage. I can't believe it. Nice. Oh, um, I hit his shield. Are you serious right now? Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> this is actually hilarious. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. Oh, I almost got killed by this guy. Get him. Oh, no. I thought I thought I hit him there for a second. I thought I hit him there, but apparently not. Take him down. Take him. Yeah, there we go. Take that, Imperial Legionary. Take that, everyone, including Batanian Volunteers for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why this guy has Batanian Volunteers, but okay. Apparently he does. Let's tell my infantry to charge in now because we, of course, have the, uh, well, pretty significant numbers advantage. Oh, oh, he got murdered. He got murdered. Okay, yeah, so that's the thing. What I need to do, especially with this character, is be a little bit less inclined to use my throne weapons. Only use throne weapons when I have a uh, pretty good advantage to using them because, obviously, if you are not going to hit with them, you're doing zero damage, you know, you're doing zero damage and you're not helping your side to achieve victory. And as a result, it would probably be a better idea. And this is a bit of a self analysis here for me specifically, because of course, I don't know how you play, but I know how I play. And uh, in these cases, it would have been much better for me to just switch to two handed or use my one handed and shield to get close to the opponent and then just go to town on those guys, especially two handed, because if I'm able to get in the enemy lines and take out some of their lighter, weaker units, it's going to cause morale problems for them very, very quickly indeed, just purely for the fact that we have that perk, that two handed perk, and it really makes a huge difference. All right, I'm going to be capturing basically every single person here because I have the space, I think. Oh, I almost have enough space. So let me just get rid of a couple of lower tier units like these Sturgeons. And uh, some Azariah, I guess. What? Oh, I'm still over the, oh, I'm still over the limit by a little bit. Okay. Um, don't, uh, oh, lo loads of Imperial recruits. Oh, loads of Imperial recruits that I can get rid of. Okay. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so that was good. That was really nice. We prevented this uh, this village from being, uh, well, uh, raided, destroyed, whatever. And uh, we can now go in here and do a little bit of selling. And uh, this, is, this is the thing. Every single one of these fights that we do is working our way towards our, our final ultimate goal. And that ultimate goal is... Well, of course, to be able to do as many vassal battles as we can. But it is primarily to get an army that is capable of taking fiefs, an army that is capable of defending ourselves against pretty much any opponent, and so on. So generally doing anything like that would be 
Uh, very, very nice uh, to see. So, uh, uh, oh, hello there. Are you chasing me? Are you are you serious? Does he really want to chase me? It doesn't seem like it. Okay, 4.5. We're moving at 4.4. And this... Yeah, okay. So, look at this guy right here. Fen Giol, right? Or Fen Gael or whatever. Um, this guy... No? Can't, can't see it? Apparently, I can't see that for some reason. I don't know why, but all right. Okay, so... Uh, let me actually have a look here. Yeah, this guy. He has switched factions so many times. And you know what he does? He takes a fief over to our opponents every single time. And Of Castle was just given to him. You see that? Of Castle was given to him four days ago. And where is Of Castle right now? Let me actually just take a quick look. Where is it? For some reason, I, I can't see it. Did he did he leave without the castle? Because if he left without the castle, then that's absolutely fine. But, yeah, no, no. I think they took it back or something like that. I'm actually not sure. But whatever the case, yeah, that's, that's really bad, no? That is really, really bad that he continues to faction hop every single time he rejoins the Batanians. I don't know why Kalodog hasn't executed him already. He's a, he, he's a huge thorn in our side. And I don't know uh, how he's even capable of rejoining us all the time. It's really quite fascinating. Anyway, we are going to try to do some damage to this guy. Don't think he's the leader of the Brotherhood? Gutlands? Gutlands? I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know this guy. Uh, it's a bit weird. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering whether they actually randomize their names somewhat um, for these minor factions because it seems like every single time I come across a minor faction, I always think to myself, wait a minute, I don't know this guy, even though I have actually had dealings with the Brotherhood and uh, the various other minor factions quite significantly in other playthroughs. But, well, you know, <laughs> maybe there are times when um, the leader will get voted out or get replaced, or maybe it is indeed just random. We don't know. But otherwise, let's have a look here. Okay, so the main enemy force is coming in from over here. Let's get our archers over here. We really don't have that many cavalry, unfortunately. So we're just going to have to do a relatively similar thing to what we usually do. But we are going to go into shield wall this time around, and we're going to put our archers into a loose formation. That's going to be the best thing that we can try to do and now here's the thing i'm going to try and take my own advice from my uh, self-analysis beforehand and that is not going to be using my throne weapons too much even though i absolutely love using them i think they're super fun to use against shielded units they're probably not the most effective and it's kind of it's kind of sad to to be honest. I feel like thrown weapons should destroy shields really really fast, but I don't think that that is actually the case at the moment. I don't think um, the amount of uh, damage that they do is enough to destroy shields as fast as it possibly could be, um, because I I remember in Warband, thrown weapons. Oh, hello there. This is actually pretty good. Yeah, look at that. That is actually perfect. They're just standing around here with pretty much no shields. That is hilarious. Yeah, so these these kinds of situations, yes, this is absolutely fine to uh, do your thing. Gonna tell my guys to charge in, actually, because I'm gonna get shot and killed otherwise. And that would not be too pleasant. Get him. Yes, okay, a, a little bit, a little bit. There we go, nice. Yes. Just, just, just run around. Just kind of run around and uh, outmaneuver them because we do have the superior athletic skill, of course. Let's tell our guys to charge in. Never mind. That is indeed a victory for us. And we're gaining some pretty good renown rewards, good influence as well, so that we can actually impact the game with the exception of winning battles, of course, which is exactly what we want. And these Arboreals are actually really good, by the way. They have 200 bow skill which is pretty impressive. Um, but I won't be taking them, as I've said before, because they are not. I mean, technically, they could be considered Batanians, kind of. I think that the Brotherhood is more of a Batanian-focused minor faction, kind of, I think. But uh, they don't have any uh, people that I can... Oh, I should have taken them to sell. 
Ah, my bad, my bad. Oh, well, it's okay. We have 1.28 million. I mean, I think we have enough money to do what we need to do right now. But uh, yeah, if I wanted to be super harsh on myself, then I'd say, oh, yes, I should definitely have taken those guys. But they're going to give me how much? Like 2,000 or something like that? Probably not that much. All right, so Remtoil Castle, fellows. It's about time that I actually take this thing. Hopefully. Um, if anyone appears out of nowhere, then of course I will be uh, probably running away relatively quickly. Uh, Omor has been besieged by Kaladog, which is going to be kind of interesting to see what happens there. And we have another army over there led by Urgeon. And uh, now I'm actually just going to pause things real quick because I'm... Oh yeah, my engineering skill is so bad that I can't even construct flame onagers or anything like that. Wow, okay. Yeah, this is going <laughs> to... Oh dear. This is going to take a long time. Yeah. This is going to take a significantly long time. I should have gotten a companion, eh? I should have gotten a companion that would have provided us with some engineering skill. Or I should have spec'd into engineering myself. Uh, that probably would have been a good idea. Oh well, never mind. It's going to take a while. But hopefully we'll be done before any army appears out of nowhere. Now, I'm actually hoping that once we complete this siege, if we can, because I actually did just see a very, very large army uh, pass by us. They had over a thousand units, which is uh, it's kind of scary. But otherwise, I'm very much hoping that if we do end up taking this, that we have the ability to um, maybe get it, you know, maybe get the ownership over the castle. That would be pretty fantastic for us. Um, but yeah. As it stands, I think we're probably going to have some pretty big difficulties here, potentially. Because if my trebuchets can't uh, can't deal with the walls or can't deal with the uh, enemy siege equipment, I'm going to have to spend even more time building siege, and it is uh, going to be a bit problematic. Um, I don't know whether you've noticed, but the uh, enemy garrison has also increased in size since me beginning the siege. So I'm not entirely sure how they're sneaking people in, but... Apparently they are, unless they're just, um, you know, having people give birth and then they're sending the babies out onto the battlements, you know. <laughs> That's not going to happen, is it? No. But anyway, the walls are almost down, which is actually very surprising. Of Castle has been taken. I'm not going to be voting on that. Generally, I have uh, almost 100 relation with Kaladog now, which is very impressive in my opinion. For us to be able to get that relation... Uh, so quickly, it really, really helped us. And I guess what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to lead the assault straight away. And we're up against 70 units. I have no idea what kinds of units they have in the garrison here, but I would assume that they're not going to be too difficult to deal with. And also, all of my trebuchets are actually uh, available here, which is pretty cool. And you can decide to uh, remove these things as well. Uh, can you Can you actually tell them where to fire? I actually don't know about that. But, um, yeah, it's pretty cool that you can actually see the siege equipment on the battlefield itself. So let's see what we can do. I feel like this castle looks really imposing, doesn't it? I mean, just look at it. It looks like uh, <laughs> looks like something you'd see out of Lord of the Rings or something like that, you know? I can just imagine, you know, hordes of orcs or something like that being on the battlements here. And you just looking up and seeing a huge fire and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Um, but, yeah. It's going to be fun to see all the mods that come out, the uh, total conversions and things like that. Otherwise, let's go to two-handed. Let's go to two-handed and see if I can do some damage. Oh, yes. Personally, I feel like... Um, I I'm not entirely sure where the crush through blocks um, trait is for, uh, for weapons. Uh, because in Warband, there used to be a trait. If you haven't played Warband then uh, this will explain things, but if you have, then you know you know what I'm already talking about. But anyway, the crush through blocks trait is a thing that can appear on heavy weapons, mostly unbalanced, um, blunt weapons like maces and uh, hammers and stuff like that. And generally, it is, it is considered probably one of the more powerful traits, just purely for the fact that you will be able to get past your enemy's block by doing partial damage. It does partial damage most of the time. Some of the time it even gives you more than that because you have so much power strike or something like that. 
and the enemy has such weak armor that you should be able to do almost full damage, maybe even kill the enemy through their block. So if they're holding up a shield and you use an overhead attack with a, with a mace, with this crush through blocks trait, it will partially damage the opponent. And if they've already been damaged, then they'll be taken down. And I, um, I'm actually hoping that they may add something like that again, because being able to crush through blocks is kind of, kind of amazing. And uh, it, it obviously has a number of different drawbacks, because of course, you know, it's usually on weapons that are extremely unbalanced, very slow, and hard to use. However, that's the point. It's a it's a sort of balancing act. It's kind of like a double-edged sword, really. You know, on the one hand, you have a uh, weapon that is really, really cool and is capable of getting through blocks, and on the other hand, you have something that is really slow and hard to hard to actually utilize in a uh, practical situation. But that's the point. That's the reason why I think that a trait like that is actually really cool. Um, although I haven't actually seen a lot of hammers and maces. So it might very well be the case that, huh, you might, yeah, we, we might actually already have that trait in the game, but I just haven't seen it. So that's going to be interesting to find out. I'm going to abstain from this. And I will be probably voting on the next one. Really? Do I not get it? Are you serious? Is it why, why is it so difficult for them to give it to me? I mean, to, for, for them to give me the option to, to bid on myself. <sighs> oh, well. Never mind. Okay, so let's have a look here. Who Who is someone that we want to get closer to? Let's actually have a look. All right, so does he have anyone that I might want to marry? Well, yes. Waithuin... Waithuin is someone that can potentially be married. As you can see, she doesn't have uh, any uh, any spouse at the moment. She is age 30. And we also have... Who is the other guy? Who is the... Oh, no. I'm going back the wrong way. There we go. Prindor. Prindor. And he has, he has no one. He has no one in his clan. So I suppose it makes sense to give it to Melodia. I will probably spend 50. Should I? I think I'll do 100, actually. There's another 9 skill points in charm. And just look at the amount of charm. Well, not charm. But look at the amount of relation we're getting. It's crazy. It is really, really crazy. And uh, for the cheap price of uh, 200 influence. Pretty good, right? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so let me see what I can do here. I would like, uh, maybe I can do this. Oh, no, it's just that I've, I, no, I can't do that because I need more influence than that to be able to make it work. Oh, well, never mind, never mind. Okay, so that has been taken, which is decent. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just take a quick look at some of the hammers that are potentially available. I'm going to have a look in the marketplace itself to begin with. Because uh, you never know, maybe there will be something here that actually has the crush through blocks thing. I don't think it. I don't think it will. Um, yeah, there's a huge amount of my weapons that I've created here. No, no. Okay, so these these things do not have anything. I don't think, unless I'm not seeing some of the other traits that are available. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the smithy and we're going to make our own. So let's have a look. Two-handed mace. I can't actually make this. Because I don't have the hardened oaken two-handed axe handle for some reason. Apparently I don't have that. Okay, so what about a two-handed axe? Uh, this, uh, yeah, heavy bardish head. And this, and that's it? That's it? Really? Uh, the handling goes down significantly. But you really need more weapon reach, don't you? So let's go for 108, and then we'll increase this a little bit. There we go, something like that. But that's the thing. I don't know what this does. I don't know what this does, whether it actually uh, helps us out at all or not. So I, I guess we'll just try it, and we'll see what happens. Head l l lopper. There we go, head lopper. Oh, we got an iron mace handle. Oh, that's pretty good. 
I think that's for a one-handed mace, though, which is probably not going to really result in anything too amazing. Okay, so Headlopper. Where's Headlopper? Uh, there it is. There it is. Oh, okay. So, uh, I, I, I wish I could see what these... Oh, I can actually see what these are. Oh, it does have a bonus against shields, as you can see right there. That is the the uh, icon that determines whether it has a bonus against shields. I actually wonder whether I have any maces in my... I don't think I do. This has a bonus against shields as well. Oh, that's actually pretty interesting. Okay. Well, next time I... Oh, wait. There's a mace. It's a spiked... Uh, no, nah, it's a spiked club. That's not going to... That's not going to have any traits whatsoever. Nah. You're going to need something else to be able to make that work. Yeah. You're going to need something else. Probably a two-handed or something like that. But of course, it's probably not fleshed out right now. The amount of... Um, the amount of two-handed maces that are in the game at the moment are significantly less than pretty much everything else. So maybe they'll be uh, adding a whole bunch more as we go forward in the development of Bannerlord. But that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.